can you you had said i guess back in february you talked about the receivers but um who do you think can step up behind jahan uh, among your group and secondly i want to ask you about a local kid where do you see isaac lutz uh figuring in uh your plans for the 2020 season yeah good 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 question and um you know, to, to be honest, I can see uh, quite a few of the guys stepping up, you know, and, and that's what still kind of unknown as far as who, you know, who might have a, a head start over somebody else. Um, but there's 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 some talent in that room. Um, there's some guys in there that that um, that really want to be be great. And so it, it's it's really going to challenge them over this period of time to see who is. Uh, learning the playbook the way they need to learn it, who is going out there and working the technique that that uh, we talk about in order to put themselves in the best position once once we have a camp uh, to to be able to do that. So, you know, it, naming one particular guy, I, I'm, I'm not sure that I can do that. I, I know that I'm excited for the competition in our room to see who – because because it's going to be flat out open competition guys are going to have to show up um so i i don't know uh the question that i to the specific answer to that i just know that there's a few guys that will have that opportunity in reference to uh to lutz you know i've, I've enjoyed lutz um he's he's working hard i know that i know he's finding time in a safe place to to get out there and work work on his craft. I know that he's uh, asked great questions in our meetings. He's been top, uh, top of the um, group in, in, in the quizzes that we, we've had. Um, so uh, I am excited to see what he is going to bring to the table in this 2020 season. Next up is Bob Flounders, Penn Live. Hi, Taylor. Thanks for chatting with us today. Hey, no problem. Taylor, um, being a former wideout and coaching uh, for for some for a few years now, what would you say are a couple of advantages of playing wideout in an RPO offense? And I know it's early at Penn State for you, but have you noticed anything specific about Kirk Chiraka's RPO that makes it a little different from maybe some others? Um, well, what 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 I like about it is that we have answers. Um, that's what that's what's pretty cool about this offense you know sometimes you get into these offenses where you have to be so complex or we put too much on the players to figure out and so what what coach rocks uh, offense does is it allows us to put the players in the best position now are we going to do that every single time no uh, but the rpo game allows us to put players put defensive players in conflict it allows us to put different uh defensive players in conflict so they do not know exactly which one we are putting in conflict and we make them to be a little bit more hesitant so um i know this as a, as a as a former wide receiver uh playing in the slot having to go block a a linebacker who's typically uh, bigger than you if you get him to hesitate just a little bit that might be an opportunity for you to uh be a little bit more physical uh than 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 you may have if he knew that there is no rpo option so or, or a pass option so uh, i think it allows receivers to play uh faster especially in the run game when it is a, let's say an automatic handoff where you can go where you can be physical you you potentially know that whether it's the outside backer, uh, whether it's a, a safety, you know that you can go and be a little bit more aggressive and not have to worry so much about either, um, you know, the force of it or uh, them trying to juke you one way or the other. Next up is John Petitionock, happyvalley.com. Hey, good morning, Taylor. Appreciate the time today and hope you and your family are doing well. What's going on, John? It's kind of a, a bigger picture question. Going back to your playing days, how have you seen Big Ten office, Big Ten offenses evolve over the last two decades? 
And in what ways does Penn State's offense distinguish itself from what other schools in the conference are doing, even if it may look similar? You know, uh, this will be my first uh, year coaching in the Big Ten. You know, a as a player, you know, back in, you know, between 2000 and 2004, you know, it's kind of like us in Northwestern were doing um, kind of similar things. We didn't necessarily have the RPO game. We had more of a run plus an add-on um, where you would pre-snap, look out, do you feel like you have leverage on, on on a defender to throw a bubble? Do you feel like you have numbers? You know, now it's kind of evolved to this to the RPO game, right? Where where you truly are. It's it's it, it, in some regards it's option football. You, you are reading somebody and determining what you're going to do based off of his reaction. And so, um, you know, offenses in general. I mean, shoot, even in the National Football League with what guy with what the Baltimore Ravens are doing. It's a little bit more of a college uh, offense, and and uh, you know not as similar to what it has been in the National Football League for so for so long. So um, <clears throat> it, it's going to be interesting, you know, to see uh, the different different offenses. I haven't seen a ton of the the Big Ten often offenses over 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 my years being in the ACC and the Pac-12 and some other other conferences. Um, so I, I do know that um, it, it has become a little bit more of, of a passing offense, uh, passing league than what it had been back when I was playing. You know, back when I was playing, there was Ron Dang. There's some big old dudes in the, in the, uh, the, the, the guys at Minnesota. Um, but um, but what, what we are able to do now is to continue to have our backs flat out eat and if defenses want to try to stop our running backs from eating, we'll be able to put those guys in conflict and really make them decide what, what do they want to stop. And we have some really good backs here, so we should have an opportunity as wideouts to eat as well when defenses are trying to uh, uh, stop, whether it be our, our, our tight ends, whether it be our, our running backs. Next up is Mark Brennan, Lions 247. Taylor, what have your initial impressions been of Jahan as a player? I know you haven't had an opportunity to work with him on the field, but obviously I'm sure you've watched a lot of film and talked to him a lot. And this may be a stretch, but do you see any of yourself kind of in him? Kind of that you guys are both kind of the same size, not the biggest guys in the world, but uh, you know, kind of natural football players. Yeah, we, we you know, I talked with Han, we both got bird chests, you know. No, I'm joking. Um, Jahan is much more athletic than, than I ever was. Um, he can do some things naturally that, that I was more of a technical skilled guy. Um, he's a guy that has more athletic ability than, than, than I have had. Um, and so that's what's, what's exciting about him is that he has the athletic ability and then to put the skill on top of it makes it, a, a great combination so um you're right i haven't had a uh a ton of time to work with him but seeing what he's been doing now what we did in winter workouts um uh, he's he I, I really do believe that he is progressing to have you know a, a big season so i'm excited for him i'm excited for the whole group because there, there's a lot some you know, there's some uncertainty there and we're challenging. Shoot, I'm challenged. Uh, um, we are challenged and we are up for the challenge to to bring it and to be consistent and to be explosive and to be tough. You're going to hear me say that quite a bit. And, and, and you're going to hear my guys talk about about that kind of stuff, because that's what we want to be. Next up is Audrey Snyder with The Athletic. Hey, Dillard, thanks for your time this morning. Um, hey. I wanted to ask you about two two guys who came in here together, uh, TJ Jones and John Dunmore. Where do you see mm -hmm. both of those guys at right now? Where are the areas where both of those guys can grow and improve? Um, the, you know, those, you know, Florida Cats. They they like to run, right? That that's what that's what uh, they're known for is, is shoot being out there in the sunny weather, playing football year round, and and. Um, you know, you can tell when we when we have our Zoom meetings that they're either 
just getting done, getting a workout in or getting ready to get a workout in. And so, um, you know, we still have to remember that they're still fairly young. And um, so the progression and we're in, we're in a new offense. So um, it is making sure that they are doing more than just what we are allowed to do to make sure that they are ready to go with what to do. Um, so that when we get to fall camp, we're, we're, we're going more into the technique side, more into the how to get things done, how to do it more than we would be if, than we want to be when they're talking about what to do. We don't, we want to be past that stage. And so uh, that's something that I've been challenging all the guys, but specifically TJ and JD to make sure that they come in here prepared to know what to do so that we can work out all the kinks on how to do it. Next up is Nevias Wilbur, Pittsburgh Post-Gazette. Hey, Coach. You actually kind of led into the question that I want to ask. Um, how is it working with all these receivers when you can't see them in full formations going over a particular new offense? Um, yeah, we, we got to come up with creative ways. We really do. Um, quizzes, um, whether it be, you know, a semi-walkthrough small groups, um, ways to, that, that we can, um, you know, in their rooms a little bit, right? See, see them line up here, line up there, but um, they're doing a great job of taking the resources that we have while being safe and not being around people to try to um, get things done both mentally and physically. And so we, and we, we, we've been challenged. I have a great GA, GA and Jeff Carpenter. He's been awesome with some of the, uh, the, the different uh, vehicles that we can use for, for um, quizzes that are interactive, that are time, um, that are time sensitive and also allows them to see the competition of the other guys in the room, see how fast they're getting it done and see what the score is. And so we, we are, we are definitely trying to make our room um, where we're not just sitting sitting there the entire time and just me having a, uh, a monologue. It's been interactive. And, um, you know, I know that they've been going out and, and getting some work done. So we, we try to talk about some of the technique and we pull up some film of what we did do um, in winter camp because we had some periods of times we were able to do some individual work and for them to truly work work on it and break it down to where you're crawling, you're walking, you're jogging to your sprinting so that it has that progression that they can get their body in, 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 in a position where they can learn that hard skill, not the soft skill, the hard skill of what we're looking for in regards to wide receiver play. Next up is Mike Carmen, Lafayette Journal. Uh, hi, Taylor, and I apologize to the Penn State media for throwing a Purdue question in here. Uh, but, you know, I, I think before you set the, uh, the reception record uh, back in 2004, Joe Tiller said he was surprised a skinny kid from Washington could catch that many balls. Uh, so how did a skinny kid from Washington end up at Purdue and playing for, for Coach Tiller? Um, one, <clears throat> I wanted to do something different. I didn't want to, um, you know, some, some people in my area, they like in my area, my hometown, it is, it is big time Washington state, big time university of Washington. And so, um, I wanted to do something different and there was actually a lot of Washington connections on that staff. I mean, coach Tiller had, had, um, had coached at Washington state, uh, the quarterback coach, uh, Greg Olson. Uh, he's from basically an hour from where I'm from. Um, he coached my head coach in, in, in college. So there was tons of, um, of connections there. And shoot, I mean, I, I wanted to play in the Big Ten. Um, the Big Ten, well, you, you always saw the Big Ten on, on TV, always. And um, it did help to have Drew Brees uh, being the quarterback at that particular time. And so um, it, it, it made it, um, and they were, you know, doing the basketball and grass. And so as a receiver, I was like, shoot, let me go ahead and, and uh, uh, go over there. And, and, and at the same time, 
I didn't get recruited by Penn State. So uh, Purdue was a good fit for me. Next up is Donnie Collins, Times Tribune. Hey, Taylor, how are you doing? Um, I'm doing well. Great. Um, I was wanted to ask you about the, the two, uh, two kids who enrolled early, uh, Lambert Smith and Dot. And what did you see from them in the, in the very early going? And how do you hope they handle the uh, next couple of weeks and months? Yeah, you know, you know, you kind of, um, uh, you know, you enroll early to try to get a head start, and they have done that. Uh, they've been able to do that in the weight room. They've been able to <clears throat> try to change their bodies uh, with, 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 with our strength and conditioning staff, and they do a phenomenal job with them. And you can see already just the transformation that they're, uh, that they're having with their body. Uh, on top of that, I'm excited because they've been, they've been able to bond with some of the guys. You know, it's when you come in as a new new guy uh, or a freshman, um, you know, there it's you got to acclimate to the subculture of the room, and you have to bond with with the other guys. And so, uh, what they've been able to do, they've been able to do that. Um, they've been able to do that now, and so um, I'm excited to see what Dotton brings to the table because I know he's a guy that kind of um, when you talk to him off the field he's kind of he's kind of calm uh, kind of very collected and 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 I'm excited to see him flip that switch on when he gets onto the field to have a little dog come out of him um, Keandre uh, Dre he is uh, he he wants it he has something he has something different in him there might be some sort of different motivation for him because uh, you can tell he he wants it, uh, and and uh, and he's willing to put the work in to reach that goal. You know, it, we talk about the process. He he wants he, he is he wants the process. He wants the hard stuff. He wants to get coached. And you know what? He has a little bit of that mentality of hating to lose, which is what I love, because everybody loves to win but who hates to lose? And so whether he's, you know, I talked about those quizzes earlier. Um, you know, if he gets, if he gets one wrong, especially one that he knows he should know, uh, he, he gets fired up, he gets fired up. And so uh, it's, it's, um, they've both been doing a great job. I'm excited to see what, uh, what, what they're going to do come this fall camp. Next up is Greg Pickle, Penn Live. How you doing, Coach? Doing well. Good. Hey, what do you think has separated Penn State's recruiting efforts from other schools around the country? Since everyone's kind of doing the same thing. You guys have had some success of late. What do you think has separated what you guys are doing compared to other schools? I think, um, well, I think right now, this period of time, it allows, um, it allows recruits to really see the real side of a program without the flash because it's sometimes in recruiting you can get blinded by the glitz and the glamour of you know seeing somebody's you know uh, fancy words and uh, nice polo and and um, possibly what car they drive up to in practice and and all these antics um, what I think coach Franklin has done a tremendous job with this whole staff is he's put people in places in different departments, whether it be analytics, whether it be recruiting, uh, player development, whatever, is I think families and players and recruits have been able to see how legit this program is. And everybody in recruiting talks about, I wanna find a place where I feel comfortable. I think that you find that here when you really sit down and you cancel out some of the noise and you say, okay, what's important to me? A great education, a, a top tier program that has a chance to win a national championship, being around an established program that has an unbelievable history and a place where you can feel comfortable in knowing that you are gonna get developed as a person and as a player. So when I think that this is a period of time that families can sit down and really recognize which programs are doing that. And I think that's what helped, that's what has helped us over this last uh, month, month and a half. Frank Bodani, York Daily Record. 
Hey, good morning, Taylor. Um, also about recruiting, since you're new to Penn State, can you talk a little bit about um, what it's been like for you, particularly during a, a, the virus pandemic, to kind of start recruiting for this school, how it might be? Is there anything different in your previous answer, how recruiting might be different now than it was at your other stops? Uh, you better have your, your, your phone charged, right? I mean, you better have some outlets all over the place to make sure your, your, your electronics are, are charged because right now you're going to be on it quite a bit, whether that be evaluating film um, or whether that's taking calls, Zoom calls, what, whatever it may be. Um, so so that's that's different, right? I mean, all of us right here, shoot, if your, your iPad goes dead, you, you, we're missing out on some questions, right? So... Um, Recruiting has also changed and things have happened earlier, right? Um, some of the guys that in this 2021 board uh, that we have, um, there's maybe one or two that are in the, let's say, top 10 of, 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 of my board that are new that, let's say, we did not know about. But other than that, um, I mean, w once again, Coach Franklin has done a great job of putting people in place that handle like looking ahead. And so um, me getting here, there are some guys that, okay, you look at them and you're like, oh, shoot, these, these are some really good guys. And now, now you just build relationships. And so that's um, what we're doing right now. Um, I, I do think our um, recruiting department and our, our, our creative department has shot out, you know, they've had to find more creative ways to push out content of what, let's say, our facilities look like, uh, what, um, uh, you know, e each coach on staff, we've introduced them. So we've been, we found, we have been finding creative ways to do these things um, during this time, but it, it's still about building relationships and that's what we've been able to do. And it has been more through uh, these avenues of uh, Zoom or FaceTime or, or, or whatnot. Jerry DePaula, Pittsburgh Tribune Review. Uh, good morning, Coach. Uh, thanks a lot for your time. Uh, I was wondering, you, you took a new job in January, mid-January, and, and then two months later, you know, your, the rules change. What's it been like for you getting acclimated to the Penn State system and getting familiar with things while, while doing these Zoom things all the time? Uh, yeah, I mean, um, that has been, yeah, it's been a challenge. I think it's been a challenge for all of us. Uh, you know, we, we, we had right after recruiting, we had a, um, a good time, um, a good month, month and a half, uh, you know, five weeks before spring break. And then we come back and, you know, we're, we kind of um, work remotely. So um, it has been challenging. I'm still, you know, I, shoot, my house was supposed to be done here in about two weeks. I don't think it's going to be done in, in, in two weeks. Um, so, um, we, it, it's been a transition, right? We've had to uh, change plans to almost weekly as to when we go up there to, to actually move into to our house. So, um, but there's a great support group. Uh, you know, other guys are going through it. Other guys are going through the transition as well. Coach Franklin has been extre extremely supportive in regards to just understanding where, where everybody's at in the, in the move and, um, I'm fired up to to be able to move into my house when, whenever that will be. But uh, the you know the 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 town is kind of cool, right? I mean, uh, you you go walk down the the streets when I was there, and you you see the uh, there's there's some cool little shops in there, some cool little places to um, to 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 eat and and whatnot. So I'm excited to just do more of that, um, and especially when the weather's a little bit nicer too. Next up is Tyler Donahue, Lions 247. Oh, Tyler, you there? I'm here. Go ahead. Hey, Taylor, good morning. Thanks for the insight this morning. Good to hear from you. It's, thank you. Um, quickly, I, I do have a football question, but you mentioned not having your house ready. It looks like you're in an RV. Are you in an yeah. RV right now? I Are am. you living in one? You're just recording it in one. Yeah, I wish I could say that this was like my um, – you know, my, my man cave, right? No, I'm actually in the state of Washington right now. Um, uh, I came out here 
a few days ago. This, you know, this is where I'm from, obviously. Um, my mom, my mom found out some news, so I wanted to kind of be around her a little bit right now. So, um, so yeah, that's I'm I'm in an RV, man. And I'm, I'm I am a, it does have a shower though, so I uh, I am making sure that that, that I shower and whatnot. So I am. You got good eyes. Uh, I'll be honest, I had a few people on the beat texting about the possibility that you were in an RV. So I figured yeah. I'd be the one to ask them. Uh, yeah. <laughs> moving ahead, um, football related here. Uh, the depth chart, we're all chomping at the bit for any news about this 2020 team. The depth chart came out Saturday. What ultimately led Daniel George, TJ Jones to join Jahan Dotson as the first team guys on that initial outlook? Um. To be honest, um, not a lot. <laughs> uh, and, and I told my guys when that depth chart come out, comes out that it is it is ever changing. And I told the guys that are at the top, do not sit there and 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 you know beat your chest and be like, hey, I, I made it. And if you were a third or fourth four string guy right now, to also not you know put your head down and say, dang. I, I don't have a chance because um, we, we didn't have spring ball. So, and, and we have a room that is, is, is full of young guys. So um, we did a little bit of workouts. I mean, some of it um, of, of how we kind of structure who's at X and who's at Z kind of, kind of a, a little bit of that. Um, but um, yeah, I mean, we, it, it is, it is going to be ever changing right now. And, and I hope that, um, everybody, every single one of them, okay, is is really motivated to either keep it, keep it where they're at, or to change it. And um, so, yeah, th th there's not a lot of. Um, it's definitely not. I don't even think it was in pencil that it was written in. It might have been in, um, you know, watercolor ink or something that can possibly disappear to ink that 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 was written in time for a couple more joe giuliano philadelphia inquire uh, good morning taylor thanks a lot for your time this morning um i, I would say that um outside of uh, hamler and dotson that the wide receiver group kind of underachieved last year uh, as a new coach uh, how do you work with them to help them uh, realize their potential especially given the challenges of working remotely yeah, you know, the, so the wide receiver room, the the, the players that we're talking about did not, did, um, the players in the room right now, they did not really play last year, you know, and so I, I do think a lot of, um, a lot of the attention to this room as underachieving, there's a lot of the guys in the room that did not even play. So what I'm approaching these guys with is, I mean, what what whatever, is said about last year's team, but who had a phenomenal year. This is 2020 and we have guys in this room that need to be ready to take the next step in their career and in, in, in our development as our room to just produce, flat out produce. Um, Cause you know, I'm not, I'm not talking to uh, JD and say, JD, you know what, last year you just, you know, you're, you're out against uh, Michigan really was I'm not I'm not saying that to him because he didn't play right so um, there's just a lot of young guys that now have to after being here a year whether it be uh, two years they have to be ready they have to be ready to make a big play and last but not least John Salver Center Daily Times hey Taylor hope you're doing well uh, you mentioned most of the guys not playing last year. How does that impact the leadership of the room? And has anyone stepped up from that perspective? Yeah, so that's, I mean, um, obviously when, when you've played like Han, you have some instant, you have some credibility to you. Um, so, you know, the natural leader would be somebody like a, a, a Jahan. But um, I don't think Jahan is somebody who likes to, you know, uh, um, um, be extremely vocal. I think that he wants to, he's kind of a, a quiet guy that likes to do what he's supposed to do. And so 
are we challenging him on that? Absolutely. But in a way that um, he's comfortable with. There's guys like Daniel George that, that some guys look up to because they've seen his work ethic. Guys like Lutz um, that, that have earned the respect of, of the team. Um, I mean, there's guys like uh, Weller who, uh, shoot, who has, who's a pretty smart guy. And so when guys have questions, they, they, they come to him. So there's different kind of uh, ways that um, right now that the, that the leaders have been trying to be formed. And you're right. It is still something that is going to be developed. And I still think that's something that's going to come together. And it's going to come together probably a little bit easier uh, when we do start practicing to see uh, a little bit more of, of, of somebody trying to um, bring the guys together, who's going to be, be the second voice uh, or, or be a, a reflection of my voice um, in our room. I do think that we have um, a few guys that are, that are willing to step up, so I'm excited about that. All right, thank you very much, Taylor, and thank you, everybody, for joining us today. Thanks, guys.